Adventure lads, welcome to Oak Swamp and part 42 of the Austin 10 Special Wrap. Firstly this week I'd like to say big thanks to everyone who bought a t-shirt and went to the tip jar last week. Cheers lads, thanks for the support. Also I'd like to thank everyone who left a like and a comment last week. Nice one. And while I'm thanking people, last one goes out to a power of mine in Houston, Martin. You would have heard me talk about it before. Martin sent me these Chevy 216 starter brushes. They were 76 bucks to send by post, but Martin sorted it for me. Nice one. Cheers, dude. So today, it's actually the rat's birthday. It was registered on the 25th of March, 1936, so that makes him 87 years old. Happy birthday, mate. So I bought him a present. And it's a new chassis number, because his old one was pretty particularly rotten. Anyway, this week on the rat, I've got lots of little jobs to be catching up with. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Right, so where this gearbox went, the bolts were incredibly hard to get at, because this completes here, so you can't come in that end. So, I've decided, against what I really wanted to do, I'm going to use a couple of river nuts in there. Right, so now, now I need to wear this feather up. I never seem to get any better at welding. I never seem to get any better at anything. I just seem to be able to do stuff up to a certain point. It's moved it out a bit. I know, but it's still strong because it's a big old deep V in there. Give that a bit more of a tickling and rust it. Right, that's how it all welded up. It will stay to be, but I redid these two so they work, there's plenty of room there, they're not touching and I'm quite happy with them now, I'm happy enough to bolt them up but I think I can make this, this actual pedal here a little bit bigger and a bit more aggressive so your foot doesn't slip off I don't know if you remember the hook ones but I put like a mesh on top and that, that worked really well so I might do something like that but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a floor. There's a nice bit of um, bent stuff off that old Chevy truck, so I'm going to put that onto there. Got a bit of this old roof. There's a bit of Duralim. This was supposed to be a bit far, I think, but it ended up being a house. And it's got green on it, as you see. I'm wondering if I can use a bit of it. Don't go driving, man. This ain't no Vietnam. You can't go shooting guns at any old man. Don't try driving, man. Right, there you go. This is what I'm getting at. And I'm moving this lip here to somewhere for your foot to go off by doing the pedal to give you a push off point. Because it feels as though it kind of needs one. So that's what's happened. Right, so this is what it's going to do. That's going to sit on top of there, and I think I might hang a strap down here just to take take the weight. both sides in and they look pretty good. I'm really enjoying this this bit of green. Here we go. 400 mil, which is 16 inches for you Americans. I stiffen these boards up, I'm going to use a bit of this 4mm ply as well and then take all the round on. Thank <laughs> you. 
so many guns he shot another Give this a bit of a beat up just to make it look old. Yeah, well, this is going to be his little carrier for the floor. Go shooting guns at any old camp. Oh my god! Whoa! Perfect, that's made that, that's made that rigid. What I'm doing is slowly just trimming these up, getting them better and better. Whoa! Bit of the house from somewhere. Dueling. Aircraft. Right, I'm gonna hold this body on with rib nuts just to make it a bit easier. You're not gonna see them in there. Not unless you really look. Right at last, time to put the body on again. And what a beautiful day. Right, massive thanks to everyone who went to the tip jar this week. And they are as follows. Fellow bass player, Brian Colchin, Paul Gunnell, my old mate in Texas, Martin Janaway, Nudger SS, and James Wren. Now those dudes all contributed to the tip jar and they're keeping this channel running. Cheers dudes. Also this week, I received this tool here. I don't know exactly how to use it yet, but I got it from our pals over at Metal Shaper Tom. Now Tom's channel over there, he does a lot of metal shaping, doing car bodies, folding and bending and shaping aluminium. And there's a video on how to use this tool, so I'm going to be watching that soon. You'll find a link to Tom's channel in the description. Also, he's going to be doing a Austin 7 project soon, so that'll be worth checking out. Anyway, onward. Right, there you go, there's them um, drawn on, so now I've just got to paint around them. Heated it up, I've got it all wrinkly. I am um, let some bits be chipped, but it still, still looks pretty good. And this one's gonna go on the front. I'm just gonna hang them on there. I'm gonna draw a couple of holes in them. I'm gonna wire them on there and just leave them on there for the next couple of days and see what I think. It looks pretty bad, doesn't it? But about there, I think you would stop being able to read it. One. Two, three, four, take five steps. I'll leave them both now for a while and let them go hard. I've had them on the old wood burner and they've wrinkled up a bit. Well, the front one anyway, I couldn't put the tank on the wood burner. Right, so what these are for, these are going to be the base of the seat. So now all I've got to do is clean these up and then cover them in alley. Once these seats are done, I can start really moving on this because it's just little bits and bobs. I'm going to go and see Ted tomorrow. Teddy. And then it's just bolting up. I've got to bolt up, plumb up and wire up. Put a back light on, put the horn on. Do a bit of finishing here and there. Connect all the brakes up. The thing with these is I'm, I'm not trying to get them, you know, 100% accurate. I'm not doing a bit of joinery here. 
And I think having it a little bit, you know, a bit unmeasured here and there, gives a bit of a human aspect to it because it doesn't look like it's been built by a machine. I don't know if I'm trying, trying to mix art with cars. I don't know. I don't know, but that's how it feels to me. Or it could be that I'm just rough. what that wood is but there's a bit of furniture from something but I kind of like it it's got a nice look to it and it grinds well right this is another bit of the house another bit of duralim what this was before was the fascia and this the soffit and this held on to a bit of insulation but it lasted didn't it look how clean that is it's 1946 look a bit of corrosion on that end where it got a bit of water on it but look how well it's done fabulous I go like that. Right, so now I've got to bend this over that. Right, while I was sieving through the house stuff, I found a bit of this alley gutter in that come off the house. So I'm going to have a little play with this. That's handy. The big blade I ordered arrived. It's a big one for the chop saw, but it's nice and thin. And look, there you go. How cool is that? Okay, so that's what I'm getting at. Fold a piece over that. I clamp the the bottom angle to the bench and put that piece of angle on top and now I pull this up against it and I put two screws in here and now I'm going to bend this over like this look how easy that went over and what I'm going to do is going to put some screws along here and then Bob's your Charlie Bring in it, so right at the very end, I'm gonna give it a little, a little bend just to take the spring out. Mm. It's gonna sit like that. Right, so this is how it goes. Got this bit of whatever that is off the house bent into there now seat goes in like this this cross member here i've trebled up with the old rubber so when you tread in and it it's directly on it but it's just sort of like a spacer and then this piece goes in on top and this bolts to the tunnel there and through there and there we are some of the rock right let's keep going so where the brake rod comes through to the front the pitman arm just clouts on it there, so I'm going to take it down to Ted's and get him to bend it so it does a bit of that. I haven't seen Teddy for a while. Good excuse to go down and see him and see how he's getting on. Thank you at Ted's. Hey, okay. must be busy. You can see this is just like a normal street. You wouldn't imagine to find a machine shop. Uh, it's Ted. How you doing, all right? So are you all right, Ted? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Good, good. Are you busy? Snowed under. <laughs> there you go. Sign of a good engineer. Flat yeah. out all the time. I wonder if I should tell them more about your car up here, Ted. Yeah, nothing's happened to that yet. <laughs> what it's, is it, Ted? It's based on a 1951 Bentley Mark VI. Awesome. But obviously it's been customised into a tour. It's a special, isn't it? Yeah, what it is. yeah, it is yeah. special. Yeah. What size engine is that? Is that a straight six? Four and a half litre. I'm looking forward to seeing more of that Bentley. Here I go. Ah. Yeah. Bit more? Yeah. That, that's it. That's perfect. Anyway, everything's all good, Brian, and uh, that should serve its purpose. Lovely. Thanks very much, Ted. Cheers, Brian. All right. Another brilliant job done by Ted. 
bloody handy have an old teddy down there and he's a real decent bloke but also all his blokes down there they're all real nice fellas too they do all the jobs but fair play to them there we go look at that now moving on to these brake arms now where they're sitting you see where the the slot is out for the cotter pin it's not really pulling it enough because it's it's dragging it over the curve now i was just taking this off this morning and, and this snapped off i tapped it and it snapped off clean like that so i can't use that anymore i was considering trying to bend them what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut a bit of bar have it return up here i think that will give it the little bit of urge it needs because it it's just not quite there at the moment so i'm gonna cut a bit of five mil out for that right what i come up with is something like that there and then this will curl round like that so i've just got to cut that out of a bit of five mil or something something a bit heavy and then i've got to try and do that with it which should be fun got a bit of this six mil but that's thicker than the actual thing so it's going to be an absolute git to bend i should imagine one two three four very unlikely to bend. I'm gonna have to beat the granny out of this. You like that? Is it any good though? Ooh. Right, I've got to try and bend this other one in the same place. Right, let's give this a go. That appeared to work. It looks pretty strong as well. Now it's pulling from virtually the top. So every bit of pull is a bit of movement. It just didn't seem to move so much before because it was on the curve. I've left myself a good 3-4 mil of weld space there so I can really get it tucked in there. It's an odd shape I know but it's really strong. <laughs> I could cut this all the way down here, you see, but it's suddenly become weak, so I'm leaving it like that big lump. And maybe a bit later, I'll drill some holes in it, but for today, it's staying like that. So I've got this SU pump off of eBay, used one, but I didn't want to buy anything new. Those pumps all look a bit sketchy on eBay, so I'm going to give it a go, see what he does. Hey. Yeah, man, sun's out today. Right, right today I've got to make these gussets. I've got to weld this up. Because this has only ever been tacked on, it's just hung on there with free tacks. So I've got to do that. And I've got to finish these dog bones. I've got to come up with something better than this. I'm going to have to mount the SU pump, which I'm going to do under there somewhere. And then that will just leave for tomorrow, wiring and plumbing hopefully, if I can get all that lot done today, but we'll see. Well, I've got to do this tank as well. I've been just flat out on this, doing loads of little bits, and there's so many little bits that I couldn't film, because they were just too boring, or, you know, it was just backwards and forwards or whatever. If you've ever built a car, you'll probably understand. So many loose ends, and I tend to do everything twice anyway, because I do a practice run. We'll let your hair down. Get out of that skirt. Oh, but leave your high heels on. I'll be in the back of my black Cadillac when Jesus right, finally comes. Awesome. You call his children home. Yeah! Let your head down. Get out of that skirt. Oh, but leave your high heels on. other side. Oh, I'm thinking something like, like that. Right, so this one I'm doing something like that. That'll just give it enough. So I'm going to tack him on and check all the steering works and it don't hit anywhere. Okay, 
how these top nuts on the kingpins are supposed to be dome nuts like this because when you grease it it comes right up to the top and the dome nut keeps it in now the Austin Club wanted 14 quid each for those and I I'm not paying that the threads are completely screwed on these so I paid two quid for a pair of the right size nuts and what I'm gonna do is just weld it on and it'll be a nice big area for the grease to catch in so I just weld those two together like that Get your head out, get out of this hurt. I just tapped to my two braces and what I'll probably do Ow. is go inside and smear a bit of instant gasket around in there. Put my black Cadillac when Jesus finally comes to call his children. I cut this bit off now, look at that, weld him up. stuck some holes in there because I didn't like the look of it and now I've got to put some in that well I got the wheel off if you're on the old Oak Swamp Rats you might know a guy called Warren Cole Warren's also got an Austin project he calls Alan and it is it's pretty similar it's, it's the same sort of size and all that and it's interesting seeing what he's doing to his as well but we both had a discussion about venting the front brakes now originally if you look here, I put some holes in it, but they're not really, they're not really going to be grabbing the air like that, are they? So, if you remember on the old Triumphs and Nortons, the conical wheel ones, they used to have a little little vent that comes out the side. So when you're going along, it forces the air in, keeps your brakes cool. Warren's got an idea for this. So Warren, this is the way I'm doing it, man. Now you probably recognise this if you're in your old cars. This is the piece that comes off of the back of an SU carb. It sits there. This particular one is off a Mini, and the Mini ones come pretty much straight out. My thought is, is to use that, like that. This wants to be mounted about eight mil out from the, the, the brake back plate. So I've got to make a spacer, so, I brought some of this thick rubber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a gasket, the same as this out. Right, what I've done in the end is welded a stud bar to it because I can't get behind because the brake shoes are right in the way so I've just tacked these on, it's a bit hairy there at the moment. Well, there you go in the cold light of day. Now I've got a bit of this mesh and I've got just about enough. Woody, woody. I'm actually going to redo these, but that do for the minute. They look pretty cool, don't they? By the time they grubby up, way better than trying to make something. It just looks like it grew there a bit, really. I think I'm going to have to draw some moles in this, but not today. Well, that's about it for this week, lads, I'm afraid. But don't fret, because I'm out doing this again next week and I'm going to have a video for you next week. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the old subscribe button right now. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like and a comment. If you're feeling flush, leave me a couple of quid in the tip jar, or better still, buy one of those snazzy Oak Swamp t-shirts, and I will catch you dudes here next time when I'm taking this boy for an MOT. Hang loose!
Wake me when the sun has been Place me where the ground is clean Wipe my brow and mop my skin Mop my skin This tattered flesh is now in tune And I'm finished wasting time on you You remarked how cold I felt As I wasted moments on myself So lay me down and let me be Ignoring things of There's going to be a lot of Austin 10 people seeing this He's going to recognise bits of it and then not recognise and go through the little half glasses and the jumpers. So make sure you tune in, you fuckers. Right, so I'm going to go over in the woods and see if one of the lads want to give up their track rod drag link. I'm going to go over in the woods and see if one of the lads wants to sacrifice their track rod. It's not track rod, it's fucking drag link. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Ratty, happy birthday to you. Woo!